For this video, I'll be working through question three of the 2017 scholarship exam. Question three. Monochromatic light has a wavelength of 375 nanometers and it's incident on a metal surface. Potential difference of 1.3 volts, 31 volts is required to cut off the flow of photoelectrons. Calculate the work function of the metal. So we're gonna need HF is equal to the work function thi plus the kinetic energy. What else are we gonna need? We're gonna need V equals F lambda. Um, and the voltage is equal to joules per coulomb, so it's going to be change in energy. I'll just put change to separate it from our electric field over Q. In other words, energy, which is a scalar product, is equal to the voltage times the charge. What else are we going to need? So we were given the wavelength, so we we'll rearrange this and chuck that in for F. In other words, H V over lambda, because F equals V over lambda, um, minus the kinetic energy, which is going to be this. So this potential difference is required to stop it. In other words, the kinetic energy gets up to, is anything above this, like the kinetic energy above this will uh, keep going, anything below will just like go backwards. Um, but here, the kinetic energy must be equal to this because it just stops it. Um, that's the cutoff. Right, so that's going to be equal to V minus, uh, yeah, minus VQ, which is just that energy. And that is going to be equal to the uh, work function. So I'll put the numbers in. Will I? Yeah, whatever. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. That is Planck's constant. Not divided by pi times 3 times 10 to the 8. Um, over, I should be using a ruler, but I can't be bothered. 375 nanometers. I'll just put, yeah, times 10 to the negative 9 because that's nanometers. That is, and we're going to minus that uh, 1.31 volts times charge on electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And that'll give us 3.208 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, which is tiny, which is reasonable. Um, in other words, the work function is equal to 3.21 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Right, that was pretty easy. Uh, 450 milliwatt laser, ooh, that's a doozy of a laser. Um, of wavelength 581 is pointing at the moon. The laser beam spreads it out at an angle of 1.65 times 10 to the negative three radians. Calculate the maximum number of photons arriving per second per square meter on the moon. Right, how are we gonna do this? Right, so we'll find out the number of photons coming out of the laser for a start. Um, photons, and that is gonna be the total energy, ET, divided by the energy of each photon. That'll give you the total number, um, which is, all right, is that ET divided by, what is this, HF, um, HF energy is just equal to HF, um, but we don't have the frequency, we've got the wavelength, so we'll just rearrange just like we did up there, so it gives us V over lambda, why do I do V over F, that should be V over lambda, whoops, um, equals, I'm going to put some brackets around this, I don't know, um, HV over lambda, there we go, and that is equal to uh, 0 0.4, Four five times ten to the negative three because it's milliwatts divided by I'll do this um, six point six three times ten to the negative thirty four um, times three times ten to the eight divided by what's the wavelength what is it five eighty one five eighty one times ten to the negative nine bracket that is equal to one point three one four Four seven times ten to the fifteen times ten to the fifteen. Right. I draw a little picture so I can figure this out. So we're gonna have. We will do this. Here's my moon. Here's like a circle on the moon, and here's my laser pointer. That would have made that circle because it spreads out like a beam, obviously. Um, right. A little bit of year. I don't know if it's year thirteen calc, but whatever. C the circumference is equal to the radius times 
the angle and radians. In other words, this is going to be equal to the diameter of this wee circle here. And I'll tell you why that's true. This angle here, what is this, theta? If you went, if this was 2 pi, this would wrap all the way around in a circle. If it's pi, this would be half a circle. So this would go do, 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 all around, that's a terrible half circle, half circle. If it's less than pi, because pi is just 3.14, um, and it's still a radian. So if this is just in radians, this will give us that distance from here to here. That's a neat thing about using radians. Um, it's literally just a ratio between the circumference and the diameter, or the radius if you divide, if you times by two. So this will give us that diameter. In other words, um, Okay, we'll leave this here because I want to do this kind of algebraically as possible. So the area of this circle, area is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to, so this radius is going to be half this diameter, which means I'm going to, get, I'm going to substitute this in. So it's going to be equal to pi, bear with me now. <laughs> this is that there, so I'm going to put this here in uh, theta, but divided by 2 because that'll give us the radius of this wee, wee circle that's on the moon, squared, and that is going to give me, well, if you plug these numbers in, r is just the distance from where you're pointing it to the moon, so that is going to be, uh, I'll put the numbers here, 3.8 um, times 10 to the 8, times the angle, which is 1.65, times 10 to the negative 3, divided by 2, squared gives me 3.087 times 10 to the 11 times 10 to the 11 I'll try and keep that out of the markers panel um, right so photons is equal to the number divided by the area so it's photons per it's this is per square meter is per so how many divided by square meter which is area area that'll give you per square meter so it's just going to give you that number divided by that number which will give you 4243 photons right which is equal to 4240 photons this is a bit different from the answers it's just because my rounding um wasn't the best or it was probably better i'm not even sure right a photon of frequency and wavelength, uh, frequency f1 and wavelength lambda 1 is scattered by a stationary, stationary electron. The photon has a momentum given by the de Broglie relationship of h over lambda 1. Due to the interaction of photon frequency f2 and a wavelength lambda 2 results, it travels in the opposite direction to the initial photon and the electron gains an energy of 4 kilo electron volts, which is um, sort of a weird energy with velocity v in the same direction as the incident photon. Calculate the value lambda 1 and the effects of special relativity can be assumed to be negligible, otherwise I wouldn't have a hope in hell of solving this. Oh, I probably would have taken me a long time. Right, so you're going to use literally the same tricks as you used for question 2 um, substituting energy in for momentum um, which you'll find is a very useful trick a lot of the time for scholarship physics, never in regular one, uh, regular level three or two. So again, initial momentum is going to be equal to the final momentum. Um, the initial energy is going to be equal to the final energy because they're like electrons and photons, you don't really lose energy. Um, I'll chuck some stuff on the side. Wavelength is equal to the speed. So we're going to use C now because it's speed of light divided by the wavelength. I should probably use that over, over on the previous page, but whatever. And because we've got this whole h over lambda, I'm going to just write this here. 1 over lambda is equal to f over c, just because I can see that there. We're probably going to have to substitute stuff in because we're going to try and find... What are we going to try and find? We're probably going to end up using this whole hf. So it might be good to have that. Right. 
inertial momentum. The only thing that had momentum to begin with was that little photon. So he is the only momentum, and now the final momentum, the electron has momentum, mass times velocity, plus, oh no, hold on, wait. So this was going to the left, well, no, we would make him go to the right. This is gonna to go to the right, and the other photon the other way. So we're gonna minus that momentum, because the momentum was going the other way, so it's gonna be H over lambda two, because this was the second photon. Um, and what else do we have? So that is the that is the momentum sort of way to do it. And I'll just rearrange for this stuff up here because it's probably going to be a bit easier. Um, in fact, I'll just I'll just leave that we'll continue. So now we're going to have the energy. So energy is just E equals H F. Check that up here. E equals H F. You learn that in atomic physics. Um, so we're going to have the initial energy. Um, is just H F one. So this is the energy of the electron to begin with. The first, or not the electron, the first photon. It just had. There's the only energy it had, and that's the only energy of the system. And that is equal to the energy of the rest of the stuff. So that is equal to. I would put half mv squared for the electron, but it's given it to us as a number. So it's just a whole lot easier to write energy of the electron. Um, plus, because energy is a scalar quantity and you cannot have negative energy, um, the energy of the outgoing photon, which is HF2. There we go. Right. I want to solve for lambda 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this here for F2, substitute that in to this momentum formula, similar to what we did, well, kind of the opposite to what we did in question 2. Um, and then we should have an expression for f1 when we can find lambda lambda 1. Um, which So they will do that now. But what I'll do, yeah, we'll rearrange this here for f2. So that is equal to h f1 minus energy of the electron. Um, and we'll divide this by h because when we get left with, uh, that's not very often, I don't use that division symbol very often, f2. And now, I want to substitute this into there, but now we've got a problem, because this here is all lambdas, so I'm going to just rewrite this in terms of frequencies. So H, F1 over C, because I'm using this thing here, um, is equal to M, the Lee, B, uh, velocity, mass electron, velocity electron minus, again, H, F2 over C, um, and now we are going to rewrite, we're going to substitute this into there. So now we're going to get left with, um, what do we do, H, H, F1 minus, I'm going to move this here over the other side, the energy of the electron is equal to, what is that going to be equal to? Wait, I've made a mistake. I need to substitute this energy into this momentum formula. So really, what I want to do is I want to write this momentum formula and substitute that into there. So I made a mistake. Right, scribble that out. H, F1 over C, and there's going to be minus mass electron, velocity electron is equal to minus H over C, substitute F2, this F2 into here which will give me H F1 minus E um, divided by H, and that'll just cancel out my H's. Will it cancel out my H's? Yes, yes it will. So I'll just scribble that out here, and that'll get rid of that. Right, and this is also equal to, I'm gonna just expand this out, um, H F1 over C minus energy electron over C. And that should be there. Right, so now I'm going to just make this a little bit neater. Um, and I'll move this H. Well, this is a minus. And this is a plus because I had that minus there. I'm going to move this over to that side so we should get two H F1 over C's. So 
do H F one over C minus M E V E. Um, what do we do? Is equal to E electron over C because I've just made that a little bit neater. Um, you can already you can rearrange this to show that one over lambda one. I'll leave that up to you. Is equal to one over two h because I'm running out of space. M E V E plus energy of the electron divided by Planck's constant is equal to if you substitute all the numbers because we have all the numbers. Um, just a quick side note: this energy here, E. The electron is equal to, because this is an electron volts, it's QV. So if you want to find this in terms of just like energy, you need to get this voltage and times it by the charge, and it'll give you a really, really small energy, um, or small actual energy in joules. Um, and that is equal to 3.65 times 10 to the 11 meters, um, which seems reasonable. Yeah, that's a sort of a reasonable wavelength. Um, just some things to note, having pad paper to write on it makes your life a whole lot easier um, because writing this sort of neatly and succinctly, um, even on my mistakes, you know, on the second time, um, write your full answer and then translate it neater so it fits in here so it's clear for the examiners to mark. Right, next question. The number of electrons in a one gram sample of hydrogen is approximately twice the number of electrons in one gram sample of any other light, lighter element of atomic number less than eight. Explain. Right, I already know why straight off the bat. Hydrogen is unique in the fact that it doesn't really need electrons. You can have deuterium and you can have tritium. Um, it doesn't need uh, neutrons, not electrons. Well, everything needs one has electrons, doesn't need neutrons to tack the uh, protons together. As soon as you have two protons together, obviously they repel via the uh, Coulomb attractive repulse force or Coulomb repulsive force because it's two positive charges, so you need the nuclear strong force to hold them together, so you need neutrons. Um, you don't need them with hydrogen, so I'm going to pause the video, write my full answer and then discuss. Right, so what I've said is hydrogen has only one proton, thus does not need neutrons to glue it together by the nuclear strong force. I skipped out nuclear, but whatever. If, however, you have helium, it has two protons and two neutrons, generally speaking, if it's not an isotope. This means its mass number to electron number is 4 to 2, as opposed to 1 to 1 for hydrogen. This pattern continues as, add, continues as you add more neutrons to make heavier elements. So, for example, if you try to make beryllium, which I'm pretty sure has four neutrons and four protons, you've got a mass number of eight, you only have four electrons because it only has four protons, you get a eight to four, in other words, a two to one ratio, so there's the pattern.